Mawe, 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 Kiti Kata Mawe. Mawe, Mawe. Ndi Nami, Medogbe Nami Katan. Dr. Uthra and I welcome you to our presentation about our undergraduate research groups focusing on hydroponics both in Ohio and in Ghana on this 14th annual Ohio State ATI Ghana Education Abroad. In autumn 2016, three Ohio State ATI classes engaged in primary research in which they studied how to grow hydroponic greens and learned about the proposed application in Ghana. Greenhouse majors in Hort Tech 2189 agreed to provide peer oversight of the project. Our research experiment would test the viability of growing hydroponic greens for improved dry season food security. In spring 2017, the project continued with greenhouse management students as peer mentors and the Ghana Education Pre-Travel class learning the methodologies. Our goal was to develop a low-cost hydroponic technique to adapt in Ghana. Since I had engaged in a similar project with letters in Sri Lanka, I guided the group. Choosing a suitable hydroponic technique for Ghanaian farmers required finding out what resources they had available in their area. We understood that the techniques need to be simple to build and manage, startup costs need to be low, and the installations should be able to function without electricity. Therefore, we chose a stationary culture system in styrofoam boxes similar to the ones I used in Sri Lanka. We had four objectives. First, we investigated the propagation success on foam mats. Lettuce is most commonly grown in U.S. hydroponic systems. However, lettuce is not a leafy green commonly available in Ghana. Therefore, we investigated the feasibility of producing watercress, spinach, and collard, which is of interest to Ghana. In hydroponic systems, it is common to monitor electrical conductivity and pH to track nutrient availability and uptake. We tracked and adjusted EC and pH changes for optimum plant growth. Lastly, we investigated the growth of a second crop using the same nutrient solution to lower the costs for Ghanaian farmers. Students were involved from the beginning in the project-based learning experiments. They expressed interest, investment, ownership, and satisfaction. They enjoyed and learned better from the ap applied experiences, they told us. Students celebrated the successes and weathered the challenges, like the blasting of hot air from a broken pipe that burned out an entire container. They took responsibility and engaged in problem solving. Students planted seeds, cared for plants, and tracked the growth of four plants similar to the ones we expected to plant in Ghana. The collard greens top left flourished, but the spinach bottom right did not. Students transplanted the seedlings into holes they had cut in the lids of large and expensive covered storage tubs purchased from Home Depot. They made seven holes in each, six for plant plugs and the seventh for daily stirring of the nutrients solution, testing pH and EC, and adding water when the plants were taking up more water than nutrients. The project involved nearly 50 students in the U.S. In Ghana, 30 farmers and their families and seven Ohio State ATI students as teachers and mentors. Students measured and adjusted pH and EC weekly and measured plant growth until harvest. The lettuce and collard had the highest yields. Although the yield is low, watercress grows fast in the system, allowing multiple harvests. All these crops can be harvested a few leaves at a time, providing a continuous supply of leafy greens for a household. EC levels did not change drastically over time. We predicted that if the same pattern continues in Ghana, there will not be a need to adjust nutrient solution by adding nutrients or water. Therefore, once the crops are planted at the correct pH and EC, farmers will not need to worry about the solution. Since water availability is limited in Ghana, this technique is very useful compared to traditional agriculture where continuous watering is required. The solutions were topped up with water and a second crop was planted without any addition of nutrients. There was a considerable second harvest even with limited nutrient availability. These two graphs show the yield difference between two trials. Although the yield is low in the second trial, in a resource-limited situation, this is a sustainable method of saving water and nutrients. Please note that fertilizer is the most expensive input for hydroponics in Ghana. 
In Ghana, the experiment had some hitches. The transplants were too immature and the sun too hot for the first crop. But faculty were able to encourage the students and the students then encouraged each other. One said, if it worked the first time, it wouldn't be research. Another student traveler who hadn't developed a research grant learned a lot from watching the others. I want to go to Ghana again in 2018, but I want to have my own relationship with the farmers based on our common research, and I want the research money. In the end, the real question for students is, can they meet the criteria? Can they write a clear abstract, keep a weekly progress report, prepare a poster presentation, and present at an undergraduate research forum? Education abroad and undergraduate research are both buzz projects. This combines both. Even for the students who don't travel, they can provide assistance to African farmers through local research. They feel the connection. On-campus students admitted preferring applied learning. Quote, I understand material I'm learning better that way, one said. Another re student researcher and Ghana traveler, Jordan, wrote, among the many African proverbs, one truly spoke to me involving my travels to Ghana this summer. If you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. I remember the day Dr. Uthara asked about my interest in hydroponics and if I had any interest in research. I figured this would be something small, but then she said we were going to bring it to Ghana. I was speechless. Before I knew it, we made it through our mock trials, our classes, and were on a flight to Ghana. I felt like the moment we arrived, we started our marathon for the trials. We hit the ground running and didn't stop. All I can really say is that Ghana was truly a blessing to me. It was such an amazing overall experience. I think about going back every day and cannot wait to return. My life has changed for the better thanks to my time abroad. On the research side, to bring down the cost of chemicals for hydroponics, the 2018 Ghana Education Abroad was already planning a biodigester project to provide methane for cook stoves. We collaborated with our scientists and began a new trial in late September. This project will use the slurry, the waste from the biodigesters, as the nutrient solution for the hydroponics. Engineering and greenhouse management students will partner with Ghana travelers and faculty members to conduct both an autumn and spring trial in our Worcester greenhouses. Traveling students will then implement the project in Ghana.